Susan, I have some terrible news. I don't know how to say this, but our wedding dress is ruined. Completely destroyed. What? Our wedding dress is ruined? Yes, it's true. I just got a phone call from the wedding venue. They were frantic. They said that the dress you were going to wear tomorrow was shredded to pieces. They said it looked like someone took a pair of scissors and cut it up. There's no way to fix it. No, this can't be happening. What about our wedding tomorrow? I don't know, honey. The only thing we can do is try to find another dress. But I don't know if we can. But tomorrow is our wedding day. How are we supposed to find another dress in such a short time? Do you have any idea how hard it is to find a wedding dress that fits me and matches our theme? I know it's impossible, but we have to try. The staff at the wedding venue said they are doing everything they can to help us. They are searching all the nearby bridal shops to see if they have any dresses that we can use instead of the one that was ruined. But it's already late in the day. How are we going to get a new dress in time for tomorrow? It's not just a matter of buying a dress. It has to be altered and fitted to me. It's not like I can wear just any dress off the rack. And what about the veil, the shoes, the accessories? Everything was coordinated with the original dress. I know, it's a nightmare. I'm so sorry, Susan. I don't think we have any other choice but to cancel the wedding. I don't see how we can pull this off. No, please don't say that. We can't cancel the wedding. We've been planning this for so long. We can't just call it off. But what else can we do? This is a disaster. How did this even happen? Why was our dress torn apart? Did they give you any explanation? Was it an accident or something? Or was it deliberate? Did someone sabotage our wedding? I don't know, Susan, but I'm going to find out. I'm on my way to the wedding venue right now. I'm going to see the dress for myself and talk to the people in charge. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Yes, Susan, I did it. I took your precious wedding dress and turned it into a work of art. You won't be walking down the aisle in that dress you so meticulously chose. What are you talking about? I shredded it. It's a masterpiece now. A testament to my creativity. I'm sure you've heard from the venue about the state of your dress. Hold on. Are you saying you destroyed my wedding dress? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. I went to the venue and made sure your dress was beyond repair. I must have used a dozen blades. <laughs> but why, Clara? You'd be surprised how lax the security is at the wedding venue. I've had a hard time sneaking a water bottle into a baseball game. When I told them I was scouting venues for my own wedding, they let me in without a second thought. And the staff? They were so helpful. They showed me your dress without me even asking. It was as if they wanted me to ruin it. You should be more upset with them than with me. They failed to protect your precious dress. You're unbelievable. How could you do this to me? Tomorrow is our wedding day, a day we've been planning for over a year. Oh, please. Don't play innocent. You know why I did it. I can't stand you. I despise you more than anyone else. So, you snuck into the venue and ruined my wedding dress because you think I'm stealing your brother from you? Ugh, if you were at least somewhat attractive, I might have been okay with it. But let's face it, you're not. The first time I saw you, my immediate reaction was disbelief. You, an ordinary, unremarkable woman, are not even in the same league as my brother. No, scratch that. You're not even in the same universe. You're simply not good enough for him. Ordinary and unremarkable? Really? I've been telling you this for a long time, haven't I? I told you that if you wanted to marry my brother, you needed to strive to be a better woman. Less ordinary and unremarkable. My brother is one of the most attractive men on the planet. You realize how proud I am to be his sister, right? 
But his fiancée is this plain, boring woman. Ugh, I just couldn't accept it. I understand how much you love your brother and how close you two were growing up. He's told me all about it, and so have you. But shouldn't you be happy for the person you love to find his own happiness? That's what mature people do for those they love. Wait, what? To you, I might be that ordinary, boring woman, but I'm not that in his eyes. I work hard every day to ensure I'm a woman worthy of being his wife. I don't just sit around trying to look pretty. Your brother Ivan proposed to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? What on earth are you talking about? Are you saying that you're ordinary but loved? Is that some kind of boast? You're actually quite conceited, aren't you? You like to make sure you're superior to everyone else, huh? I didn't expect that. Wait, what? So, as long as you're loved, nothing else matters, right? You only care about yourself. There's someone else who's holding back so much, who's lonely and sad because of you and your antics. But I guess you don't care about that person, right? You want me to spend the rest of my life, including all my birthdays, all alone, with no older brother to buy me a cake? Huh? Don't play innocent, Susan. You must know what I'm talking about. We share the same birthday. That means I'll never get to celebrate my birthday because he'll be celebrating yours. Wait, what? Let me tell you about my brother. He's always made my birthday special. More than anyone else in the world. He would spend the entire day with his little sister because it was a once-in-a-year event and nothing else mattered to him. But everything changed when he started dating you. He suddenly stopped making my day special. Why do you have the same birthday as me? Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't know about your birthday. If I had known, I would have done things differently. Ivan never mentioned your birthday to me. Your apologies only infuriate me. Don't ever apologize to me again. No number of apologies can bring back the birthdays I missed with my sweet, adorable older brother. Those memories are lost forever. Uh... After he started dating you, my brother changed completely. He's not the same brother I knew when he was single. After he started dating you, he stopped spending time with me altogether. He's been putting our time together on hold. Oh, that's because he was proposing to me on my birthday. We were all busy then. Now it all makes sense. I think he even told me about how busy he was with the proposal. He said he had to make all the reservations and get everything ready. He's never treated me like this before. Never! Only after he started dating you did he start treating me this poorly. He's been pushing me aside, never going out with me. He prioritizes you over me and always says he'll deal with me another day or rain check our special outings. Don't you understand what I'm saying? That's why I decided to take matters into my own hands. To make sure your dress was torn to shreds so you could maybe begin to feel the pain I felt. I understand your frustration, but you must realize there are boundaries, right? You can't just go around destroying wedding dresses, especially the day before the wedding. Do you have any idea of the stress this puts on us and all of our guests? Enough, Susan. Just stop talking. That shredded dress is a reflection of my shattered heart. Don't you get it? I want you to look at that dress. Really look at it. So you and my brother can fully comprehend the pain you caused me and how broken my heart is. You actually have no authority to do anything about my job offer. Once they send out the job offers, there's nothing that anyone can do to take it back. Actually, I am exactly the person who can do something about that. I'm the CEO of Feynman Dory. You probably won't believe me, but... What? You're the CEO? You really should have been more careful, Clara. You should probably remember the name of the CEO of the company you wanted to work for. It's not that big of a company. It's fairly small scale, so I thought I knew all of the employees. Well, I should have been more careful to pick and choose which new hires we should hire for each season. I just let the HR guys handle all of it. I mean, I guess since I'm the business owner here, I should at least make sure to glance through the applications to see who I'm hiring, huh? 
What? Hang on just a second. What the hell are you talking about? Is the company that I got a job offer from seriously the company that you're the president of? There's no way, right? I'm sorry, but if you don't believe me, there's an easy way to find out. Just Google it yourself on the internet, and you'll be able to find everything you need all on there. Alright, we'll talk again later, Clara. By the way, you're not off the hook with the wedding ceremony, either. You're going to have to take full responsibility for cancelling my wedding ceremony. So, how did it feel? Did you get a good look at your pitifully destroyed wedding dress? Yes, the wedding staff sent me some photos. You've really outdone yourself this time, haven't you? It's more than just torn up. You've turned the wedding dress into a useless rag. There's no way anyone can repair it in time. Not in this condition. Oh, that's unfortunate. I must have really lost myself in the act of tearing up that dress. I was so focused on making sure you understood my anger that I don't even remember what it looked like afterwards. Enough with the games. What are you going to do now? You realize that the wedding ceremony tomorrow is almost impossible to proceed with, thanks to your antics, right? Well, I do feel sorry for you. You must be so upset right now. I guess that means tomorrow's wedding ceremony will have to be cancelled. Just like I wanted, huh? Wow. I think I'll go celebrate with some drinks. It might be cancelled now, but if it does come down to that, you're going to be held responsible for all of this. You understand that, right? So you're okay with that? What? Responsible for what? There's no way I'm taking responsibility for all of this. What makes you think I'd take that responsibility? You know it's your fault for ruining the dress, right? If you hadn't ruined our dress, we would be perfectly fine going through with the wedding ceremony tomorrow. You need to take responsibility because that's the right thing to do. It's your fault that you took my older brother from me. That's why I decided to ruin it for you. Let me simplify it for you. The wedding being cancelled tomorrow is all your fault. You brought this upon yourself. I have no responsibility to take care of for it. What the... Oh, wait. I just thought of something. If you're going to be cancelling the wedding ceremony, I have a great idea what to do instead of your silly little ceremony. Why don't we all celebrate my job offer? That would be a great party to have instead of your silly little wedding ceremony. What are you talking about celebrating your job offer? Oh, I guess I just forgot to tell you. I was actually offered a job by my first choice company. I had an interview and they were so quick to accept me. They must have really liked me. Of course, I told my older brother right away. I think I told him as soon as I got the call from them. But he said that he was going to have a celebration for me being able to find a job after you guys finish your silly wedding. But if your wedding ceremony is going to be cancelled anyway, then we could probably go ahead and move my job offer celebration to the front of the line. What? Let's face it, Susan. You can't just cancel the wedding venue the day before the ceremony, right? Even I know that. They're probably already preparing all the food and decorations. So... Why let it go to waste? Imagine all that hard work being discarded just because you're trying to marry my brother. Let's repurpose the celebration. We can celebrate my job offer instead. Congratulations to me on the job offer from Feynman Dory. I'm going to be working hard this spring at the most incredible accessory design company in the area. Wait, what? I know you don't want to cancel the wedding, but let's be realistic here. You need to face the facts. If you think the wedding is still going to happen without a dress for you to wear, you're deluding yourself. You really have no choice but to call off the whole ceremony, right? Honestly, you might as well call off the engagement too. That would be perfect. Just cancel your silly wedding because your dress was torn to pieces and call off your silly engagement. Because my older brother deserves a better bride. Okay, then I'll tell you what else. We're going to have to cancel your job offer. Wait. What? I never expected this kind of coincidence to happen in real life. But who knew? Anyway, I have to call the wedding venue and let them know that we can't go through with the wedding. You're exactly right, Clara. 
We can't go through with the wedding ceremony without a wedding dress for me to wear. After that, we have to contact the HR department at the company and let them know what's going on. You'll have to be removed from the list of new hires, because you won't be getting a job offer from that company. What? Removed? What are you talking about? Why are you going on about canceling the job offer and removing me from the list of new hires? You actually did it, didn't you? You canceled my job offer. And now you're telling me that you're going ahead with your wedding. I demand you let me into the wedding venue immediately, Susan. I know you're reading this. I can't believe you're trying to get in right now. There's no way I'm letting you in, Clara. You're a threat, as evidenced by the destroyed wedding dress. Honestly, I feel like you might try to ruin my new dress after finding out about your job offer being cancelled. How does that feel, by the way? If that's what you're thinking, then you need to undo the cancellation of the job offer right now. Do you hear me? That was the job I wanted the most. How could you do this to me? You don't understand the impact of your actions. I want you to know that I've already turned down all other job offers. I literally have no other job prospects now. And then you sit there and tell me you're canceling my job offer at the last second? Don't you dare do this to me. You can rant all you want. But I'm telling you right now, neither I nor any of my employees would want to work with someone like you. And just so you know, I have the authority to decide what happens in my company. I decide who works here without anyone else's input. You do realize this is illegal, right? You're breaking all sorts of laws by doing this to me. Just because you're the CEO doesn't mean you can rescind job offers willy-nilly. I know my rights, and I'm telling you this is not within your rights. If you don't rectify this immediately, I'm going to make sure everyone knows about your misconduct. Are you okay with that? Are you sure you can back up your words, or are you just spouting nonsense? If you're just saying random things that come to your mind, I suggest you keep them to yourself. Because you're not going to intimidate me into keeping you in my company. What? You're the CEO of an entire company and you don't even know basic labor laws. Wow. You're more ignorant than I thought. When a company formally offers a job position to a potential employee, you've already signed away your right to rescind that job offer. We've essentially signed a contract. You can't just cancel the job offer on your end. It's literally against the law. Haven't you read a newspaper? You need a really good reason, or you simply can't rescind someone's job offer. And believe me, you don't have any legal, valid reason to rescind my job offer right now. Oh, okay. Thanks for enlightening me about my legal rights. Now I know I'm doing the right thing. I have a reason that I personally believe is legally justifiable and certifiable to rescind your job offer. I don't know, maybe the applicant is being arrested. So we've decided to rescind the job offer. I'm no lawyer, but I'm pretty sure that if the applicant becomes a criminal, then it would be completely acceptable for the company to rescind any kind of job offer. What did you just say? Clara, we just finished the wedding ceremony a while ago. I've been consulting with my legal team about what to do next. They suggested that I liaise with the wedding venue, as technically, they're the victims here. You destroyed their property. So, they've been discussing the next steps with Ivan. I regret to inform you that the venue staff have decided to report your actions to the police. Ivan specifically asked them to press as many charges against you as possible, and I quote, put her away for as long as possible. I've also taken the liberty of screenshotting all our text messages and sent them to Ivan so he can hand them over to the venue as evidence. What? Just so you know, they're likely going to file charges against you soon. You know what comes next, right? The police will be paying you a visit. It won't take them long. You're going to have to take responsibility for your actions this time. You'll be so busy dealing with the legal battle that you won't be able to focus on finding a new job. If anything, you should thank me for allowing you to focus on your legal issues. Wait! You're lying! My brother would never do such a thing to me. Are you serious? The police? 
you're involving the police in all this? I think this is way too much, don't you? All I did was make a simple modification to your dress with a knife. It was just one little dress. What the hell? Clara, use your common sense. It's literally vandalism. You destroyed their property. If it was just a dress that I had bought and asked the venue to hold on to, that would be one thing. But the dress you decided to shred? That dress belonged to the venue. So, it's out of my hands, isn't it? Yeah, but think about it. It's literally just a single dress. It's not that big of a deal, right? I can't believe this is being blown out of proportion. How would the police get involved in this mess? It's not even my fault if you think about it. The venue management should really rethink their security. If anything, I should be thanked for exposing flaws in their security. Hold on. Explain that thought to me, Clara. Because if the management at the wedding venue had checked my belongings properly, then I never would have been able to cut up the wedding dress. They really need to revamp their security. The security and management at the venue were far too lax. They brought this upon themselves. If anything, you're the one who needs to take full responsibility for everything that happened. You're the one who bears the most responsibility for all of this. If you hadn't tried to marry my older brother, then none of this would have happened. My brother would still love me, and you'd still be happy. The wedding venue would still have a perfect dress for the next person who wanted to use it. I never would have touched the dress if it wasn't for you. Hey, Clara. What the hell? Are you being serious right now? You really believe all that toxic nonsense you just texted? Huh? Clara, are you seriously suggesting that you're not at all fault for shredding the dress at the wedding venue? That the real culprit's the venue's management for their lax security and Susan for provoking you to destroy the dress? I need to know, Clara. Are you genuinely convinced that I need to be aware of your madness? Wait, hold on. Am I talking to Susan right now? Or is this Ivan? So what if it's your older brother texting? How does that change anything you've said? Are you going to suddenly accept everything and reconsider your actions if you find out it's me? Oh no. Let's get back to the point. I want to know if what you said earlier was your honest belief or if you were just being emotional. Depending on your answer, I'm considering severing all ties with you for the foreseeable future. Wait, are you serious? All ties? Yes, absolutely. I'm aware that we've been spending less time together since I started dating Susan. I'm not oblivious. I know we used to spend more time together, but that's normal considering we're both adults now, right? We're not children anymore. It's completely normal, but then you had to go and create this mess. You're insulting my fiancé, calling her ugly and unworthy of me. Honestly, did you utter a single word or phrase that wasn't toxic? And on top of that, you lose control and start shredding the dress we were going to use for the wedding. You're out of line. I don't want such a destructive person to be my sister. I don't want anyone like that in my life. Wait a minute. Ivan, don't lash out at me like that, okay? I don't want to hear you say you don't want me anymore. You have no idea how much pain I'm in. I was just a little sad. You know, I miss my older brother and all the fun times we used to have together. So if you're just a little sad, then you're allowed to break several laws and go berserk? Destroy a dress worth several thousand dollars? It's not even your dress, it's someone else's. You think you'll be forgiven just because you're a little sad when you're broken so many people's hearts who put their heart and soul into this? I mean, when you put it that way... I'm done. I'm ending this relationship with you starting today. Don't ever expect to talk to me again. I've already informed our parents about what's going on and what's going to happen. I told them they need to cut ties with you too. And they're totally okay with me cutting ties with you. You can bet that Susan, who was once on your side, is okay with it too. I don't like this Ivan. Don't say that. 
I don't want you to dislike me anymore. You're my beloved and wonderful older brother. I don't want you to just cut ties with me. You're gonna make me sad. I promise I'll formally apologize to Susan. I'll write a note and everything, I swear. I'll even go as far as making a formal apology to the wedding venue staff. And I'll make sure I pay for all the damage I've caused. Please forgive me. Are you some kind of fool, Clara? You're going to apologize to everyone involved in this and pay for the damages, regardless of what I do? And here you are saying that you want to use that as a reason for me not to break all communication with you? How selfish are you? You really think that'll work? But, Ivan... Clara, listen to me. From this point forward, you're going to spend a lot of time alone reflecting on everything you've done. You're going to feel the weight of your guilt and fully absorb it. The dress you destroyed was worth a significant amount, by the way. It's not a trivial matter. Expect to pay several thousand dollars. You had better pay the full amount and then some. You need to truly comprehend the extent of the damage you've inflicted on others. You're joking, right? Wait a minute. Are you telling me that a wedding dress is really that expensive? I thought it was just a few hundred bucks or something. You really didn't know? Educate yourself, Clara. Most wedding dresses cost several tens of thousands of dollars. They're not cheap. What? Many people rent the same dress over and over. That's the only reason the dress can be rented out for a reasonable amount by the average person. But lucky for you, our dress was special. So our rental was closer to several thousand dollars. You're lying. You're making all this up to mess with me, right? Wait a minute. How much am I going to be sued for? Tell me, Ivan. Clara, I'm not going to spoon feed your information. Why on earth would I know how much the wedding venue is going to sue you for? Also, just so you know, our parents and I are definitely not going to bail you out. You're going to pay for it all your own. You need to start taking responsibility for your actions. Do you understand me? You better start getting back to basics before you start working for someone and earning a paycheck. Because at this rate, you're not going anywhere in life. Clara found herself pleading for mercy at the wedding venue. Promising to repay the cost of the wedding dress. They managed to settle out of court, but the settlement, which included the dress fees, soared over $80,000. Clara was staring down the barrel of a long road of debt. She darted from one loan company to another like a headless chicken, desperate to make her payments and avoid jail time. After graduating from college, she was promptly ousted from her parents' house and left to fend for herself. She toiled day and night to chip away at her loans. Apparently, she was so strapped for cash that she couldn't even afford work clothes, resorting to asking friends for their hand-me-downs. She would then cut and sew these mismatched pieces together, trying to make them fit as they came in all shapes and sizes.